This is John Boykin from the Gilson Engineering Toledo, Ohio office. Today we want to talk about some of the advanced diagnostics features we have in the Siemens Hydro Ranger, Multi Ranger, and LUT400 ultrasonic level control products. In particular, we want to talk about echo profiles and understanding what they're telling us. The first thing we need to do in any one of these products is using the front keypad Go into the program mode by hitting the right arrow. And then for the main display, we want to go to Maintenance Diagnostics, Diagnostics, and then Echo Profile. In the first example here, I actually want to show an example of a good echo profile. Now, first of all, what are we looking at? Well, in the upper left-hand corner, we showed the confidence shown by C equals 34. Anything above 10 is acceptable. Uh, 25 is a really good number, and in this case, 34 is excellent. Next to that, we have A, which stands for algorithm. In this case, it's, the algorithm is the best of largest and first. And then next to that, the D, or distance, from the center face to the level we're selecting is 87.8 inches. Now, looking downward, we got uh, the actual echo. And then below that, we have kind of a horizontal line here, which we call the TVT, or the time-varying threshold line. What's that telling us is only echoes that exceed that TVT line are going to be considered as valid echoes. Now, understanding this uh, a little bit better, uh, in the X plane, going left to right, that's our distance from the sensor face downward. And the Y, or vertical plane, that is our amplitude of the uh, return echo. And here's an example of a uh, application where we have a false obstruction above the actual water level. Now this could be ladder rungs, it could be a pipe, it could be a concrete wall and a lift station, it could be many things. But in this particular application, the first echo going downward is a false echo from some type of obstruction, and the echo from the actual level is below that. Well, since we have a very strong echo from this false obstruction, the level control thinks that's our level. So what do we do to get rid of it? We have a couple of options. Number one is if we have the sensor right above a uh, very reflective uh, 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 device, whether it be a, a wall or a pipe, if we consider moving it to get rid of that obstruction, that's probably our first choice. If not, there's some tricks we can do. One of them is the auto false echo suppression. What that does is it basically maps out any type of false obstruction we have above the, the actual level. Now that works pretty well, but does not work all the time. Uh, for example, we put a level sensor right above a beam or right above a pipe. We can't see through it. It's for applications where we've got the, we're getting partial echoes off of uh, devices kind of off to the side. So we can try doing it, but in some cases we may actually have to move the sensor away from an obstruction. Now this example, we show a phenom phenomenon called double reflection. Now, the way ultrasonics work are, the sensor creates noise, the noise goes down, bounces off the level, comes back up, we measure time of flight. In a lot of applications, if you have a flat roof or a curved, uh, even like a parabolic or curved roof, we can get a double reflection, and if everything aligns right, the double or second or third reflection can be stronger than the first reflection, and the level control picks that as our level. Now, taking a look at this application, they, we have a very strong first echo, then we have a second echo, which is not quite as strong, and a third echo. And looking at this, you can tell that the, that the second and third echo are exactly two and three times distance from the first echo. So what do we do to get rid of this? Uh, the easiest thing we can do, and it works out most of the time, is changing the algorithm in the program from best of largest and first to a true first. So what the uh, level control will do in this case is choose the first echo that it sees above that TVT line and pick that as our level and ignore the second and third echoes. Electrical noise can cause us a lot of problems also, um, especially if the signal wire we have coming from the sensor back to the level control is not grounded or not grounded properly. So the two conductors in the shield that come from the sensor back into the level control, I want to make sure that, that shield is tied to the shield connection. And also I want to make sure that the power ground is tied to a good earth ground. 
what we're seeing a lot now is VFDs are just creating a tremendous amount of ambient electrical noise that can be picked up by the sensor. So if possible, uh, we want to make sure that the VFDs are uh, you know, wired right using the correct type of wire. Uh, they're filtered correctly to try to reduce the amount of noise. And also we want to make sure that the, the sensor, the ultrasonic sensor wire, is not in the same conduit as any type of uh, AC power line. So we want to keep that separate from any other uh, you know, noise generating lines. Now look at this echo profile, we see that the primary echo, which is the correct echo bouncing off the liquid, is pretty weak, uh, a little bit below 50 decibels. Uh, I can see my confidence also has gone down to 14. And 14 is acceptable, but uh, we're getting a little bit uh, a little marginal there. In this particular case, the sensor was about, 14, or actually about 10, 15 degrees from vertical, so it wasn't aimed properly. One had that sensor point straight down so that whatever I, whenever I bounce off the liquid level, it comes straight back up. Now, if you are using ultrasonics for uh, granular level, you may want to have the sensor pointed a little bit towards the, uh, the bottom the center of the silo so that the reflection we get is more normal to the, uh, the, the granular product. But for liquid applications, you definitely want to have it pointed straight down. The last example we're going to look at today it probably is uh, represented by 50% of the phone calls we get when people are having issues with ultrasonic level controls. And it's a phenomenon called ringback. Now let's go back to the way these ultrasonic sensors work. The level control sends a voltage to the piezo crystal within the level control, or level sensor. It creates noise, then it wants to quiet down really quickly so it can listen for a return echo. With ringback, the sensor is too tight. And for the threaded mount ones, where you have it, um, the one inch sensor uh, threaded to the conduit too tightly, or in a flange mount, if the flange bolts are too tight, what can happen is it's like hitting a wine glass with a fork. It, it pings and it doesn't quiet down for a little bit. So what happens is it creates noise, it wants to listen for the echo, but it's still ringing itself. Therefore, we don't know where the level is. So how do we take care of ring back? If the sensor is threaded mounted, I want to loosen it so it's just barely hand tight. If necessary, put a couple layers of Teflon tape around the threads. For a flange mount, take the flange or take the sensor off the flange, put one or two rubber gaskets between the uh, vessel flange and the sensor flange, and just hand tighten the bolts if you can. I want to get rid of that acoustic coupling between the sensor and what it's mounted to. Now, if you're paying close attention, you notice this screen, the uh, the graph looks a little bit different. Uh, a little bit different grid lines, we've got a couple different colors on it. This is actually a screenshot taking, not from the Hydra Ranger or the LUT itself, but on a computer uh, running Dolphin software uh, that's connected to the Hydra Ranger. So with the Hydra Ranger and Multi Ranger, we can use Dolphin software, which you can download from the Gilson Engineering website. You can use the Siemens PDM software. And on the LUT400, you can use Pactware uh, to actually look at things graphically on your computer screen. So I hope I've given you some ideas of how you can use the uh, echo profiles to diagnose what might be going on with your uh, ultrasonic level controls. Um, what well, you can also do, feel very free to uh, give us a call and text us a picture of your echo profiles. We can take a look at it and uh, normally we can uh, diagnose what's going on. Please visit our website at www.gilsoneng.com. Thank you very much.